So Manas uh, is a junior undergrad here in, here in electrical engineering, and he'll be delivering a talk on GANs or generative adversarial networks. So over to Manas. Thanks. So good evening, one and all. Uh, I'll be talking about GANs, which is generative adversarial networks. There's been a lot of buzz these days about GANs and their application. You just pick up any random deep learning paper, somewhere or the other, they'll be using GANs. But where exactly and what exactly a GAN is, we'll just figure it out. And just a disclaimer, this will be an, an overview, so I won't be going more into the theoretical aspect. I'll just show you what it is about. So GAN is basically used to create fake data, such that it is photorealistically, it seems like it's a real thing. But uh, at the same time, uh, it's not real in the sense that the numerical values are very different from, from what the real data is. But it perceptually seems that it's the same thing. It's used in a lot of uh, ways for data augmentation and also in places where there is very, uh, there's unsupervised tasks or semi-supervised tasks. Those are potential application places of GANs. And specific talking of specific applications, we have medical imaging super resolution. And one of the biggest buzz these days is domain transfer. So visualizing the structure, uh, there are two networks. One is a generator, other is a discriminator. Generator generates some fake data. Discriminator gives it feedback if the generator has made a good uh, fake data or not. And there is a switch, as you can see. The switch is between real and the fake data. So we are training the discriminator to study if it is a real image or a fake image. And once the discriminator is trained properly, we can then have a better generated image as well. And as you can see here is the latent space and a noise. So we, you can have any random input and still get some uh, meaningful output out of it. And let's talk about the idea of adversarial training. There have been other networks, convolutional neural networks, they have been there for a, quite some while. But where this thing helps is an adversarial training, where your generator and discriminator are actually fighting each other to win, so that they produce the best outcome. The idea is simple, you, the generator generates fake data, discriminator tells if it's fake or not. If it is fake, you again modify the weights of the generator, else your network is ready. This is implemented by a minimax loss, which is minimizing the maximum probability. It is highly used in game theory and strategy uh, problems. And yes, your discriminator, although you can train your discriminator using multiple losses, but your discriminator itself is your loss function. So uh, there are infinite possible values and you don't need to train them. Now consider this as a scenario where you have a corrupt system and a policeman takes bribe and leaves you. So this robber, uh, this thief, he, he creates fake notes. He gets caught, he gives the fake note. He realizes that it's a fake, runs away. This process goes on and on and on until the policeman is fooled. So that when the policeman gets fooled properly, that time you have successfully generated a fake note that is actually matching a real note. Now, here are a few examples of GANs, which is pix to pix which is, as you can see, a very blurred and a ha it has a hardly any features in that sketch. But using those, you can create an actual uh, output which resembles a sketch from pixel to pixel. Here is super resolution uh, is a very different application of GANs, which I have personally worked in the in this summer. You have a very low resolution image and a high resolution ground truth image. And using GANs, we have been able to reach to quite some level of uh, nearest to the ground truth. Whereas, as you can see, there's very less information in the input, but you can create some fake values to match the high resolution output. This is something you'll love to watch. Uh, any dancers out here? Well, so most of us, like me, you can't dance. So this is a professional dancer, and these are people like us who know nothing about dance. But using GANs, we can make these people dance professionally. This is a fake video we have generated using GANs. This is one of the most recent applications which I found yesterday while surfing. So there are numerous such applications that have been there and will be there in future. Another application is okay, scene generation where you have some infrared images or something and you can actually generate a real time scene. Uh, so a small demo that we have here is you have 
a hundred dimensional noisy vector, which is simply noise, you don't have anything in it. And uh, like uh, Professor Anirban sir explained uh, at the MNIST data set, we are producing an MNIST image out of it, which is a 28 cross 28 cross one digit. And again, the GAN is generating this image and the discriminator is giving us an output of the probability of how fake or how real it is. Here again, like Atisha explained, Keras is a very good thing that comes, uh, it's a package on uh, TensorFlow, it's now supported on, on Theano as well. And, uh, oh, sorry for the slide. Uh, you can, there's a model API in uh, Keras using which you simply need to add a convolutional layer. You add a set of convolutional layers and done. Your discriminator is ready. Similarly for the generator. And the next thing is adversarial training, which is uh, either you can train these two networks separately and add them, or you could just join, join both of them and you could train the entire thing. So, uh, you could, uh, both generator and discriminator will keep on fighting each other eventually, they, their losses will converge and once that is done, our GAN is completely trained and we can use it in any place. So, that's it from my side, thank you.